Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today we are talking about end-to-end -end encryption such as that which is used in some instant messaging devices when you're sending messages from your device to your friend's device. And we've got the FAQ of one such application here and it says that end-to-end -end encryption ensures only you and the person you're communicating with can read what's being sent. The implication of this is that the only two places on planet Earth where the message makes sense are your device and your friend's device. Everything in between just sees gibberish. That includes your mobile network provider, your internet service provider, WhatsApp themselves. All of these groups see gibberish. And we're going to explain how this works. But before we get into that, let's just talk a little bit about some important aspects of this. The first thing is that this is ridiculously secure. It's probably the most secure thing that we have discovered in nature. And it's actually really simple as well. The algorithm is literally a t-shirt slogan. But this simplicity comes at a cost, and the cost is that it's either on or off. Our messages are either secure or they're not secure. There's no, there's no in-between, really. Now, there are three caveats to this. Yes, your message is secure, but there are two places where it's vulnerable, and they are the two devices. So it may be that you're sending a secret message, but you don't know what your friend or you don't necessarily know what your friend is going to do with that. So if your friend shares it with other people, then obviously it's not secure. Alternatively, if someone's looking over your shoulder when you're reading the message, then it's not secure. And that's actually the, the key vulnerability. Someone looking over your shoulder when you're looking at it. The second caveat is implementation errors. So yes, the technology is mathematically incredibly secure. But if someone has implemented, implemented it incorrectly, that will clearly reduce the security. And the classic example of this is the heart bleed bug. So if you look up heart bleed, it was mathematically extremely secure, but an, uh, but a, an implementation error meant that the messages and the data that was being sent between two computers was not secure at all. And the third caveat is that we know that governments have tried to get the software companies that implement this sort of technology to make it weaker. So they've tried deliberately to weaken it. But apart from those three caveats, this technology is extremely secure. And it depends on what's known as a shared secret. Now, to explain what a shared secret is, imagine that you saw me on a train going into London or somewhere and you wanted to shout a message to me that I would understand, but nobody else would. What you could do is you could shout to me and say, hey, I saw you on your YouTube channel. Take the first letter of your YouTube channel and assign that to be A, and then the next letter is B, and the next letter is C, etc., to create a, 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 a cipher. Now, this YouTube channel is called Wonder Mass, so the first letter is W. So if you do what the person is suggesting, you end up with this. So W becomes A, X becomes B, Y becomes C, etc. And this is our shared secret. And then if you wanted to send me the message hello, you would look up H and send me a D. You'd look up E and send me an A. You'd look up L and send me two H's. And then an O would be a K, D A H H K. That's what you would shout, and I would know what it meant, but nobody else would. Now that's fine if you happen to have seen this channel, but what if you're talking about two devices that have never communicated before? Um, well, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at how two devices that have never communicated before could set up a shared secret, which would happen whenever you first communicate via instant message with your friend's device, 
but it's also the same technology that is used uh, with a website. So when a website communicates with a web server that it's never interacted with before, this is the technology that is used. So I'm going to open up some windows to illustrate this. Okay, I've got three windows here representing the two devices and the data that passes between them. And we treat the data that passes between them as if it's public because the internet service provider can, can read it and other people with access to the, uh, the data transmission can read it as well. So what happens is each of the devices comes up with a number. Now, I'm going to show you the, the, the real numbers later on. They are huge, but to keep my mathematics simple, I am going to use tiny numbers. So each of them comes up with a secret number that they don't share with anybody. And one of them comes up with a public number that gets shared. So the number five goes publicly between them both. And then what they do, what each of them does, so that one ends up with five as well. They multiply their private and the public number together. So that one gets 500 and that one gets 100. And then they share this number that I'm going to call the public private mix. So 500 passes between the two computers and 100 passes between the two computers. So that this one ends up with 100 and this one ends up with 500. Then what they each do is they multiply the uh, public private mix of their partner. So this one was 100 times their private number. So 100 by 100 divided by the, pub the first public number. And this one will do, what is it? 500 times 20 divided by five. So let's double check those. So 100 times 100 is uh, 10,000 divided by 5 gives 2,000. So that one ends up with 2,000. And this one is 500 times 20, which is 10,000 divided by 5 is 2,000. So they both end up with this shared secret but the shared secret never passed between the two in public. Now, once you've got your shared secret, you've got a number of choices for what you can do with it. But the simplest is a chunk of data that gets transferred anywhere can be viewed as just a number. However big of a chunk of data it is, you can look at it as if it's one number. So you can just add the shared secret onto it. Now, it would be trivial to figure out what the shared secret is here using this algorithm because you could work backwards from these numbers to get the, the, the share, shared secret. So all the data that you would need is here. So in reality, we don't actually use multiplication. So in this simple example, I've multiplied the numbers. In the real technology, they don't multiply the numbers. What do they do instead? Well, they use something called clock arithmetic. Now, if I bring up a picture of a clock, you can see how this works. So if you pass a number to that clock, what we're going to do is we're just going to move the R hand around. So if we pass the number 13 to it and we start at 12, it will go all the way around and then end up on 1. But if we pass the number 25 to that clock, it will go all the way around twice and then on an extra R and it will again end up on 1. So if you've got the number 1, there is no way to work backwards to figure out if the number that generated that number one was 13 or 25 or 49 or whatever it happens to be. So clock arithmetic gives you one way mathematics. A number goes in, but you cannot turn it around and go back to the original number from just the output. 
And that takes us to this algorithm, which could be used to set up a shared secret between two devices. So generate a private number, which is what we, we did as well. Publicly announce a base and a clock size. Now the clock size with the clock I just showed you was 12, but you could do it with 13, you could do it with 20. So if you do it with a clock size 20, if you feed in the number 21, it comes out as a one. Feed in a number 22, it would come out as a two. The clock size just means divide by the clock size and take the remainder. Now publicly announce, so the base and the clock size gets shared between the two devices. Calculate and publicly announce your public-private mix according to the formula here. So your public-private mix is the base that has just been shared raised to the power of your private number. So base to the power private number, divide that by the clock size and take the remainder. And then share that. So share your public-private mix. And eventually your partner will share their public-private mix, PPM star. And the shared secret is PPM star raised to your private number, divided by the clock size, and take the remainder. So here we've got an example. Device one comes up with private number two, and one of the two devices comes up with a base of seven and a clock size five. So base to the par two, clock size five, gives four. So seven to the par two, divided by 5 leaves a remainder 4, which gets shared with the other device. On the other side, its private number is 4, so 7 to the power 4 divided by 5 leaves a remainder 1, so the 1 gets publicly shared as well. Then your partner's number, which is on this side 1, you raise that to your private number, so 1 squared divided by 5 gives a remainder 1, and on this side your partner's public-private mix is 4. 4 to the power of your private number, so 4 to the power 4, divided by 5, again leaves 1. So they each end up with the shared secret 1. Now we're using really small numbers to illustrate this, but the actual numbers are this sort of size. So I wouldn't even begin to try and read that out, but it is of the magnitude uh, 1 times 10 to the 77. So that's a huge number. And it's very, very difficult to work with numbers like that. That's one of the reasons why this technique is so secure. Anyway, if you like these videos, subscribe down here somewhere, and I will see you in the next one.